Hello and welcome back to the channel today. Um, today in today's video I thought I would talk about um, street photography, uh, why I love it, why I do it, um, what gear I use for it, um, you know what settings, what camera, what lenses and how I go about doing my street photography. So stick around and um, I'll join you in a moment. <laughs> Why do I do street photography? Um, for me, my love of street photography has only come over the last, say, couple of years. Um, I'll be honest with you, I've never done any form of street photography up to about, say, two years ago. Um, one, of the, one of the things that started me off with street photography was that um, I, I made a decision to get a small mirrorless camera that I could carry to carry around with me everywhere so basically what I would do is I, I got myself a small bag that I could take to work every day and I would take it to you know if I went into town to do some shopping I would take it literally everywhere with me and that's one of the decisions why I uh, I started street photographer and uh, um, I'm quite lucky in the fact that I live um, I live very close to two big major cities, Liverpool and Manchester. And also I'm within a couple of miles of my own town. And I also work in a, a place just down the road that's a big town centre as well. So for me, I spend a lot of time in an ur urban environment. And that's one of the reasons why I do a lot of street photography because I spend so much time in those areas. And I see an awful lot of things going on and I see things that I could capture and, and places that I could, you know, take photographs. So walking through that environment and being in that, that environment every day has inspired me to do more street photography and more urban photography. So let's get, first get first get onto the camera. Um, if you're a long-term fan of this channel and you watch my videos quite a lot, you'll know that I use an Olympus camera. Um, one of the reasons why I bought an Olympus camera is because they were very small and compact um, cameras at the time. Um, Olympus was one of the very first um, mirrorless cameras on the market, um, and which has been preceded by you know the likes of Nikon and. Uh, Karen and obviously the, the other other camera manufacturers have, have come along and made cameras as well. Um, but one of the things, the reason why I bought the Olympus is because it was very small, it's very compact, and it was very very um, reasonably priced as well. The the first um, Olympus camera I bought was an EM10, and that cost me about five hundred pounds, which is a great entry into mirrorless cameras. Uh, there are a few um, things you have to look at and you know there are a few compromises you have to make for example uh, the Olympus cameras uh, struggle at anything above ISO 1600 um, and also because it's a smaller sensor you have to worry more about depth of field depth of field tends to be um, a little bit smaller on an Olympus camera um, it's, and it's very much different to a full frame camera so so essentially, if you would shoot at f8, sometimes you would have to step down to say f5.6 f5 to get that um, that level of sharpness. So you would have to play more with the the aperture, but it, it's something you can get very used to, and it's very it's very very easy to do. Um, and I I um, add that with a basically i've got a 25 mil f 1.8 lens which is equivalent to the 50 mil um, nifty 50 that you would get on um, a lot of uh, other you know APS-C and mirrorless cameras so it, it's, it's a very very 
it's current it's a lens that would be used a lot more in portraiture so but what it does is it makes a great street photography lens and um, the one thing i do recommend is is um when you do street photography is to use a prime lens the, the, the level of sharpness is is really good is a, is a really really good factor and the one thing you, the one thing that makes street photography better is that you, you need to take away um, as much of the complexity as possible. So having a 50mm lens, having literally one focal length where you're not worrying about zooming in and out, literally if you want to go closer you do it with your feet. So it makes it very, very simple to get um, an image, uh, it makes it better. Um, the 50mm lens, it does come with a bit of compromise for me because sometimes you um, struggle to get uh, the full shot or the full um, detail of the street for, of the street image that you want to get. So sometimes, so it might be better to look at to say if you want say a 35mm lens or a wider lens. But the one thing I want to stress about street photography, it does, the camera doesn't really matter. Um, with street images, if you look at a lot of street images, you'll find that they're quite um, they're quite often in black and white. They're often in um, they often have a lot of grain, a lot of texture to it. So, and it, it so you're not looking for that ultimate hundred percent sharpness or um, street photography. The, the camera is less important. The, the type of camera that you have, obviously, if you use a SLR camera of a, a camera that you can adjust the controls on then yes you may have more control over what photograph you want to take and um, so for example you might be able to change the shutter speed you change the aperture you know you can get different effects from different um, controls on the camera which which you may not be able to get on a smartphone but in terms of photo quality street photography you can get away with more or less quality the quality of say a landscape compared to a street photography image is completely different you look with a landscape image you're looking for complete sharpness you know you're looking for everything to be you know perfect crystal clear because you obviously want you know a tree in the foreground uh, see a bit of grass in the foreground to be to be um sharp and uh, you may want a bit of you know a tree say in the distance to be sharp as well depending on what type of image but whereas with street photography you more it's more about capturing a moment in time capturing that image or you know maybe a person walking past with a certain expression they may have you know a, a dog with them or an, you know, an animal it's just capturing that moment in time so perfect image quality is a less important thing to actually make sure you get the shot so it doesn't matter what camera you use as long as you know as long as you know how to use that camera perfectly so you can just basically set up take the photograph and bump that's it because with street photography it's literally a split second decision you can sit there and you know and camp and wait for a certain certain image to come into frame but you always don't know what you're going to get next so it's literally have to be on the ball bank take the photograph so you could even do it with a, with a with a smartphone there's nothing stopping you to say you can do it with a smartphone um, and sometimes a smartphone works better because it's less conspicuous um, the, the one of the things i i take away from my street photography is that is that i want it to be in, um spontaneous i don't i don't tend to do a lot of um, street portraits i know they're a very good thing but it's not a thing that i do um i want my street photography to be spontaneous to be um capturing that moment in time it's a pit and it's a particular style that i you know um i want to i want to capture but if you want to do the street portraits and go and talk to people then that's a great thing to do so don't worry about the camera or the, the lens more it's about having a camera that you know how to work and you know how to man to, to get in the right position so you can take that photo straight away because the one thing you don't want to be doing is when you're trying to capture an image in a split second you don't want to have to be you know messing about with how do i how do i set the aperture how do i set the focal length how do i set the you know the um 
the shutter speed and you know how to change the air so you literally want to be able to bump, press the shutter speed you know focus it properly uh, press the shutter speed press the shutter button and that's the photograph take you don't want to be faffing about and you know messing about with um you know getting the right setting because literally that person that, that special person that you want to take a photograph of that may be a one in a lifetime image would be halfway down the street by the time you've got your photograph set up so worry less about the camera more about how to use it let's talk about um, settings on the camera um, for me I tend to work on a, a particular set of settings um, as I've said earlier in my video I don't really want to be messing about without trying to change apertures trying to change um, no ISO you really really want to get that um, camera set up focused in place so you can set that image straight away so firstly what I do is I tend to work on um, auto ISO so I let the camera essentially set the ISO settings to how, how the camera thinks it's going to work um, but th and then what that allows me to do is it allows me to set the shutter speed and the aperture to how I want it now what I would normally do on my Olympus camera is I would normally work between 5.6 uh, uh, aperture and f8 most of the time I would leave it on f5.6 um, because the depth of field is slightly different on an Olympus camera compared to say a um, full frame camera but you can get away with, I've got away with f8 no problem whatsoever um, and but what I do is I work in say um, aperture priority mode so basically I will set the aperture at f8 allow the camera to manually adjust the shutter speed as I, as I want it depending on um, what type of image I want now if there's a situation where it's it's at a light um so what what that would do is is that it was essentially your aperture will be stuck on say f8 your shutter speed would adjust depending on the light and the darkness of, of the the scene so if it's a darker day it would you know try to um have a longer shutter speed um if it's a, a brighter day it would um adjust to say um a quicker shutter speed and then the ISO would drop up and down depending on how it needs to adjust for um, shutter speed now one thing the, the only other way I would do it is, is, is if, if you're on a day where it's extremely bright you may have to jump over to shutter speed priority because basically it could be a situation where it's um if you say it's set at f8 and then you um the camera's adjusting it too far making the image too bright or too dark then you would um you'd obviously change the shot speed or if you want a situation where um for example a project that i'm thinking of working at the moment is is focusing to um it's focusing on using um, motion blur in my street photography and it's a project that I'm going to get into um, when we can get back onto on, on the streets um, so that wouldn't work in aperture priority mode because basically I want a fixed shutter speed to, to blur an image so for me I was for this project I was thinking about working either um, f uh, 1.4 uh, shutter speed f1.4 for a second or one eighth of a second um i'm, I'm leaning more towards one eighth of a second so you would only be able to do you would only literally do that in, in um either shutter priority mode or manual mode so that might be a good idea to switch over to shutter shutter prior for priority to set that um shutter speed at a right at the, at the right point but what I would normally do is when I'm in aperture priority mode and the, the camera's adjusting the shutter speed and, it, and it, sometimes it adjusts, it's, adjusts itself too bright or too dark I would use the expo exposure compensation dial 
So I would dial it maybe say, you know, maybe a half, a, maybe like a third of a stop or um, a bit more or a bit less depending on um, the scene at the time. So instead of trying to flick it, flick with the aperture and trying to change that, I would just literally make minute adjustments with the um, exposure compensation dial. So, so to get the right, um, you know, exposure and I find that using the exposure compensation dial allows you to, you know, minutely change your exposure level for to get the right image. And it's it's, it's something nice. It seems to work um, quite good for me. Um, it,